This is a gift given worth living to the fullest. So let me pull this poetic riddle off. <laughs> One at a time, no rewinds, you'll find it in this moment for a moment, then it's gone, never to be again so long. This is a gift given worth living to the fullest. So let me pull this poetic riddle off. Each day we get one at a time. Each day we get no rewinds. Each day we get, you'll find it in this moment, for a moment, then it's gone, never to be again so long. So when my sister was talking about gratefulness, you come a point in your life when you start experiencing certain things that you will begin to say, thank God you woke me up this morning. Yeah, yeah. When you find a point in your life when you are going to funerals, a point in your life when you're just seeing people at their worst, a point in your life where, um, thank God, when you start thinking about all the different things that every single person is going through, publicly, privately, professionally, just all over the place, personally, you just get up each morning and say, thank God. Yeah. Yeah. You thank yeah. God for yeah. your friends. Yeah. You thank God for your haters. <laughs> Because it begins to work on you. Yeah. Let me hear you say one word can. One, one word, word can. Change lives, Change lives forever. The word for today. I'm going to pull it out and I got my little walking PowerPoints. And when I put this up, say it with me. Let me hear you say the word for today. The word for today. Is preach. preach. Let, me, let me hear you say it like you mean it. Let me hear you say preach. Preach. When you think about the word preach, to publicly proclaim the word of God. When we begin to preach, saints, you don't have to be in a pulpit. You can be on the phone preaching. You can be on social media preaching. You can be going through your day-to-day -day life preaching. You are publicly proclaiming the word of the God, the word of the Lord in an open space. How many of you have preached this week? All right. All right. Let me see your hands. If you have in any context of your life told somebody about Jesus Christ, said a word, said a scripture, encouraged somebody through song, yeah. you have actually put yourself in a position to preach. Let me hear you say preach. preach. When we get to preach, it is an opportunity. I say often an opportunity is a set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. A set of circumstances that make it possible to do something. There are people in this room who have circumstances that are right to preach. And God will say, in season, out of season, preach the word. Preach the word. Whether you feel like it or not, preach the word. I'm going to start off, and then I'm going to get to my context. I was quoting 2 Timothy 4, 2. 2 Timothy 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, New Living Translation. I solemnly urge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will someday judge the living and the dead when he appears to set us up in his kingdom. Preach the word of God. Be prepared, whether the time is favorable or not. Patiently correct, rebuke, and encourage your people with good teaching. Verse 3. For a time is coming when people will no longer listen to the sound and wholesome teaching. They will follow their own desires and will look for teachers who will tell them whatever their itching ears want to hear. They will reject the truth and chase after myths. But you should keep a clear mind in every situation. Don't be afraid for suffering for the Lord. Work at telling others the good news and fully let me hear you say fully 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 carry out the ministry god has given you i'm gonna pause right there god has given every single person the ministry all right fully carry out the ministry of god preach the word in season out of season whether time is favorable or not whether i feel like it or not my feelings will begin to dominate me and cause me not to be focused. 
And if I'm not focused, many times I'll get to the point where I don't want to feel like coming to church. I don't want to feel like praising the Lord. I don't want to feel like lifting my hands in worship. I don't want to feel like correcting somebody in my inner circle that actually needs correcting. I don't want to feel like receiving correction from somebody in my inner circle who's coming to me out of a heart of love. When I get to the point to where I'm just receiving and fully carrying out my ministry destiny life, it gets to the point to where I can receive and also I can be corrected and also I I can correct. I can also teach and I can also encourage. It is reciprocal because it's going over and over again. When you think about the word preach, let me hear you say preach. preach. There are conditions in place where the preaching atmosphere is right. The title of my message today is Dirty Rain. <laughs> Dirty, Dirty, rain. Dirty Rain. And you're going to see something sneak up on us over and and over and over again. If I was to walk in here, and I know some of you did this like me when I was younger. You know, you look up and, and people just start looking up. How many of you ever played a trick on somebody? <laughs> you just walking around looking up. You just keep looking up. <laughs> and you keep looking up. And actually, you know, people are like, look up, what are you looking up for? Yeah. Dirty rain. Dirty rain. This is going to be fun, I'm just telling you. Y'all like, what is he talking about? Praise the Lord. <laughs> Mark chapter 2. This is the context. Preach is just setting it off. Mark chapter 2, verse 1. When Jesus returned to Capernaum several days later, the news spread quickly that he was back home. Soon the house where he was staying was packed with visitors that there was no more room. Even outside the door while he was preaching God's word to them, four men arrived carrying a paralyzed man on a mat. They couldn't bring them to Jesus because of the crowd. So they dug a hole through the roof above his head. All right. Let me hear you say, look up. Look up. <laughs> Then they lowered the man on his mat right down in front of Jesus. Seeing their faith, Jesus said to the paralyzed man, my child, your sins are forgiven. But some of the teachers of the religious law who were sitting there thought to themselves, what is he saying? This is blasphemy. Only God can forgive sins. Jesus knew immediately what they were thinking. So he asked them, why do you question this in your hearts? Is it easier to say to the paralyzed man, your sins are forgiven, or stand up, pick up your mat, and walk? So I will prove to you that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. Then Jesus turned to the paralyzed man and said, stand up, pick up your mat, and go home. And the man jumped up, grabbed his mat, and walked out through the stunned onlookers. They were all amazed and praised God, exclaiming, we have never seen anything like this before. All right. Jesus was preaching the word. The average person, you know I'm gonna give you some research. The average person has about three to five close friends. They have about 10 to 15 people in their circle. And they will have 100 to 150 acquaintances. If you want to fact check me, scroll through your phone and you start thinking about these three to five or ride or die. Some people got one, some people got two. But the average person will have about three to five close friends. 10 to 15 people in their inner circle and about 100 to 150 acquaintances. Three to five close friends. When we're younger, we claim everybody is our best friend. <laughs> everybody. As we get older, we get wisdom and recognize that those who are close to me have my ear, I have their ear. They have my vulnerabilities, I have their vulnerabilities. And these people can, in a sense, influence and persuade me like no other. We heard the term, keep your circle small. 
When we're younger, our circle looked like a hula hoop. Praise the Lord. When we get older, our circle looked like a fruit loop. <laughs> we go from hula hoop to fruit loops. We keep that circle small. Because we began to realize that everybody can't be close to me. I'm still on dirty rain. The four men that were with the paralyzed men. The four men who were close enough to know that I got to get them to Jesus. I don't know if they just like, look, you going, we don't care what you say. Because analytically, what could he do? He was paralyzed. They could have just like, I don't care what you say. We picking you up and we're going to take you to Jesus. The closest ones brought their friend to Jesus. When I said preach the word, I believe every single person in this room might know somebody who's not saved. Every single person might know somebody that's not where they should be. And friends don't let friends go to hell. Praise the Lord. If we know how important life is and how the brevity of life can vanish in a mist, and if this person is my friend and even an enemy, sometimes it's just easier to speak to people that we don't even know. But those closest to us, am I bringing them to Jesus? When you think about the environment where Jesus, prior to, in Mark 1, it talks about Jesus was doing miracles and all of that. People were bringing people to Jesus. Jesus was telling them, hey, don't tell them that I just healed you. And they told him anyway. So the place was loaded with a bunch of spectators. Jesus was in the midst of people right before the dirty rain occurred where they're ripping the, the, the roof off the ceiling, destiny life. That particular house, mud caked on, sticks, thatch, wow. so about two feet deep sometimes, scholars would say. So if we look it up and we can see, you know, we got more of a modern roof. But they had dirt and caked up mud, sun-baked mud. So the four radical friends was trying to take this paralyzed man to see Jesus. Because Jesus was preaching the word and the conditions were set. And when we are in an environment where the word is preached, the conditions are set for a healing. Don't take it lightly every time we come into an atmosphere that when the word is preached, the conditions are set for a healing. Some of us walked in this room wearing masks and we're struggling because God is saying over and over again, come into my presence. We get in our presence and we keep the mask on strong, but the conditions are set for healing. And sometimes healing doesn't have to be physical healing. Some of us need healing from anger. Some of us need healing from jealousy. Some of us need healing from rejection. Some of us need healing from low self-esteem. Some of us need healing from, in a sense, like we know Christmas and Thanksgiving and New Year's, and we look at all of these holidays back to back to back, and we get in the presence and the proximity of family, sometimes things pop off. Memories are kind of like resurrected. Hurt birds that have been saved for years kind of come to the forefront, and we need healing sometimes just to be in the presence of somebody that we literally called a blood relative and God is saying over and over again when the word is preached there is an opportunity destiny life for healing to take place in this place right now dirty rain it was dirty rain Jesus is in the middle of spectators of haters of participators of educators, the religious leaders, you know I'm going to go some bars at you. Jesus was in the healing of history makers. Jesus was the history maker, the chain breaker. He was in the middle of some deep sleep wakers that need to be woken up. Jesus was in the middle of a lot of things going on. And he looked up. Yeah. Dirty rain. Mud. Caked up dust. Falling in the middle of his sermon. The religious leaders, no doubt, was like, what in the world is going on? They couldn't get to Jesus because the spectators were taking up all the room. They were taking up all the room. 
From time to time, and praise the Lord, and I know we've been in position over and over again and growing up for sure, where you gotta, you don't have to raise your hand, I'm gonna raise mine, but sometimes we need help getting food. All right. And you have to go to the food bank, and you open up that refrigerator and the light bulb is staring at you. All right. And you hungry, yeah. and your belly is grumbling, praise the Lord. And you go to the food, food bank and you see escalators. <laughs> And you see folk that look like they're doing pretty well. And the people who got no food are trying to get in the door to get a, a, a little sack or something. Praise God. The spectators were taking up the room. They came in walking. They came in in a position where the whole, like, I want to see what's going on. They came in to watch. Some of them came in to watch and catch. Hands up if you've ever been around somebody where you speaking and they wait for you to mess up. Anybody been in that position where people were just watching you, waiting for you to mess up? They showing up early, staying late, just so they can see you mess up. We had spectators taking up the room. The man who really needed a healing couldn't get through. Couldn't get through. Four friends, four men didn't take no for an answer. Three to five people, closest friend. 10 to 15 people in your circle. 100 to 150 people in our acquaintances. Go to your phone contacts and you start categorizing how radical people are. Creative thinkers. One of the skills that needed in life, innovative is creative thinkers. We can't get through the door, so we're gonna rip off the rope. <laughs> Love it. They yeah. tow up the roof. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Jesus set the tone yes. while he had a crowd because he was on a healing tour. Came back home to Capernaum. He's in a house and people were waiting, bringing people to him. Yeah. When you read Mark chapter 1, you'll see the conditions were already set up for an audience to be in the overflow. And they got into the position where Jesus is doing what he's, what he's doing. He's preaching the word. He's teaching. Yeah. He's breaking down scriptures. He's giving insight intrinsically, internally, so that people can have a breakthrough. I am dropping nuggets right now, Destiny Life. If you're looking for a breakthrough, if you have to like, thank God for 2023, I hope 2024 will be better, I'm going to challenge you, and I say this over and over and over again, get in the presence of God. Read the word of God. Pray the word of God. Sing the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. If you're looking for a breakthrough, if you're looking for supernatural insight and wisdom, if you're looking for creative ideas that will prosper, if you're looking for strongholds to be broken, yeah. preach the word of God to yourself. There's going to be times where you're going to have to be driving down a road, walking down a road, walking in the house. Nothing is impossible with God. You quoting your favorite scriptures over and over again. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. I'm going to speak the word to myself because if I'm truly looking for a breakthrough, I'm going to have to preach the word, Destiny Life. Let me hear you say preach. preach. Dirty rain happened because Jesus was preaching the word. They knew he had a propensity and he knew he had the, the character and the consistency when he showed up he wasn't just healing he was bringing the word the word was in the atmosphere five breaks connected with a get and then I'll be out your way dirty rain happened just like this let me hear you say there was a break in they broke in from the roof when they broke in for the roof, they, they, they basically were saying, we got to get in the presence of the Lord. If you're going to have a dirty rain experience, you got to break in. You can't be coming in knocking softly. You can't be just tiptoeing around the Holy Spirit. You got to start yelling, Jesus, I need a breakthrough. I got to have radical faith, destiny life. Yeah. For some of the wars that you're fighting right now and you whispering and you tiptoeing yeah. around the presence of God, you better praise the Lord, begin to start opening up and say, I got to break in, I got to break in to get in the presence of Jesus. Yeah. Being nice when you should be right. Come on, yeah. man. Being too timid. Better help us. Better help. Wow. Yeah. We got one life. Wow. Yeah. We got one life. Yeah. 
Yeah. Jesus. And the Lord is saying, for this dirty rain experience to happen, we got to start breaking in. The roof off the place. Yeah. yeah. If you got somebody that you know needs the Lord, break in to destiny yeah. life. Yeah. Yeah. They might come kicking and screaming. Yeah. You promised them a donut or a cupcake or <laughs> some sort of buffet afterwards. <laughs> you do what you got to do to get them in this presence. Yeah. Break in. Yeah. To get in. Got to break in. We got to break in. We got to break in. This is a gift given worth living to the fullest. I'm just telling you, each day that we walk in the presence of the Lord and we have the urgency and the tenacity to say, I'm not going to wait until next week around this time. I'm going to start doing stuff right now and the momentum will carry me day by day by day. Break in. Yeah, yeah. Second break. Let me hear you say break out. Break, break out. out. You gotta break out to get out. You gotta break out to get out. When I say you, I mean myself included. Break in was first to get in. Break out to get out. I have to begin to start breaking out of my comfort zone. All right. Yeah. In the middle of worship, I don't know what was going on, but somebody broke out of their comfort zone and came up to the altar. Didn't my, care who was yeah, looking at them. Sometimes you might have to start running around the church. Yeah. Yeah. You got to get out of your seat and yeah. start doing some different things. Yeah. Yeah. Because once that begins yeah. to happen from a human standpoint, it gets to the point where we really don't care about what people think. Yeah. Sometimes we're so reserved, destiny life, yeah. we don't have a dirty rain experience because we don't want to break out of our comfort yeah. zone. We don't want to scream, Lord Jesus. We don't want to bow our heads in a public restaurant and start saying, Jesus Christ is Lord. We get around our friends sometimes and we just begin to be ashamed of the Lord. And we got to get to the point where we break out of our comfort zone. Yeah. When they come into our presence, they're going to recognize that Jesus Christ Christ is Lord. He is the author and finisher of my faith. He is the one that waked me up this morning. He is the one that calls me to begin to speak. He is the one that I thank for a sound mind. I'm breaking out of my comfort zone. I'm not going to be conservative. I'm not going to be just full of foolery and just doing some awful things. But if the Lord puts the unction on my heart to do what I got to do, I got to have a dirty rain experience by breaking out of my comfort zone. When was the last time you ran around the church? When was the last Last time you sang with your heart? When was the last time that you screamed as loud as you do for the Kansas City Chiefs? When was the last time that God actually did something where you standing in line over life for some new Jordans, for some new LeBrons, but we actually trying to get some shoes. We try to get our shoe game on, but we don't want to get our lower game on. When was the last time that you invested some money into the house of Lord? When was the last time that you want to say, I want to break out of this? Because if I am constantly in a position where I am fighting spiritual battles in the natural I am losing the war I'm losing the war we go to war in the natural when God says go in the spirit and if I'm going to go in the spirit it's going to be raining dirt all day every day because God is going to do some supernatural things whole word right there plus tax I'm going to say it again we have to start fighting praise the Lord we have to start fighting our battles in the spirit. We are fighting our battles in the natural. That's why we stuck in the cycle. We have to start warring in the spirit. We got to get out of our comfort zone and recognize this is spiritual. This is spiritual. This is spiritual. The whole Christmas experience is spiritual. You let a young Mary say she's pregnant. And say no man touched her, we'll look at her like Mary, you cat. <laughs> Lying, Mary. Pull that off in 2023. You know it was a spiritual experience. I'm just quoting the Bible. I'm preaching right now. Yes, you are. Pro publicly proclaiming the word of God. Yeah. It's spiritual. Yeah. You can chop it up any way you want. When you open up the word of God, it's spiritual. Right. And we are fighting yeah. our natural battles. Naturally, when we should be fighting our spiritual battles in the spirit, we keep losing because we are not fighting in the spirit. 
I'm going to leave right now and just say, praise the Lord. Just leave this. And you know, like people put two fingers up. I just leave the preach up here. I say, just tape it. I'm done. That's the whole word right there. You talking about breakthrough? Start fighting our battles in the spirit. Get out of our comfort zone and start fighting our battles in the spirit. For what you're facing, for what I'm facing, for what we're collectively facing as Christians, and we keep fighting our battles in the spirit, we gonna win every time. I'm just saying this. I'm trying to be good, Pastor Cynthia, because if I say it, it's good. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I'm being good. When I say being good, it's like my mind is rolling right now. Because I'm about to say something. I'm about to say it. Now I'm just gonna say it. <laughs> you know, if somebody, hey, hey, sign on before I say this. Have you ever seen somebody about to rap? And before they're about to rap, they're like, how y'all feeling? How y'all mama doing? I'm like, man, if you don't just start breaking up. <laughs> <laughs> I'll mess with y'all stalling on purpose. Jesus. We have to quit the diversity, equity, and inclusion rhetoric without fighting it in the spirit. There is no way in the world then I'm going to get up with somebody and try to do a heart change without the Holy Spirit. When I talk about race, God is coming with me. Because God transformed race. What we do is we keep trying to change people to accept us, to welcome us, to make us feel belong, and we fight that without the Spirit. I don't care if you like me or don't like me. I don't care if you look at the package and be like, I don't like chocolate. I have no I'm going to say this with the unction and the clarity of the Holy Spirit. I have no type of remorse when it comes to do you accept me or not because of who God created me. In Psalms 139, when he created all of us, knit us and formed us together in our mother's womb, and somebody don't like us because of the color of our skin, and we are shelling out millions upon millions of dollars to get people to fight a spiritual battle and they're doing it in the natural. It's a whole word. I'm just saying over and over again. Anybody who's seen transformational type of things happen, God moves hearts. And if somebody still want to act some type of way and acts funny, I'm going to be alright. In the presence of my haters, I'm going to do what I got to do. Praise God. It might get a little uncomfortable. I'm telling you, you take that mindset into the corporate place outside of the four walls of destiny, yeah. destiny life, we got to start fighting that in the spirit. Right. If somebody's being racist and somebody's doing things and, all, and just, just being treating us horrible for whatever the reason, pray. Got to. Got to. Lord, I don't know what's going on. But Lord, I just ask that you just speak to that heart. Convict whatever the past pains, whatever the, the situation may be. They can't stop you, Lord, from stopping me from my assignment. I pray that you cover them in the mighty name of Jesus. I'm not going to depend on some unsaved person to give me a word from, from the Lord. I'm not going to depend on somebody who don't even believe the Bible, the Bible to tell me how to have better race. Because what I'm saying over and over again, based off our actions, we decide to declare who we worship. I worship the Lord. Yeah. Yeah. Period. I heard that. <laughs> Think about it. Yeah. I'm not putting my hope in somebody. All right. I mean, I go all over the place. Violence prevention. The big social issues that we're all facing. When we talk about break in, break out. How many times is Jesus Christ invited to the table? And when Jesus Christ is invited to the table, is it coming from a place of actually Christians? I'm speaking to the saints. I'm not speaking to the angels. Some of y'all, let me put up this other part. I'm going to find it right now. Let me hear you say, you ain't ready. <laughs> I, got, I got my whole turntable up here. You ain't ready. I'm just saying. Some of us have to get ready to put ourselves in a position to actually be sitting at a table where people were throwing out natural, 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 natural. And we got to start going spiritual, spiritual, yeah. spiritual, yeah. spiritual. And I'm not speaking of something. We have to go Jesus Christ spiritual. Yeah. We have to go word quoting 
Bible believing, cover to cover, standing on the word of God outside of our comfort zone. If we're going to have a dirty brain experience, we got to quit cowering down in front of people where they're saying some of the most ridiculous things and we're not even quoting the word of God in the present. We're not even praying behind the scenes. God will give us the option to pick battles and things like that. We have to get to the point where the word of God becomes number one. He'll take care of all of this stuff. Racism was all throughout history, period. This is not anything new. When, when, when God had to check the Moses, Miriam, Aaron angle, you think about how many times people were looking from, and this wasn't nowhere in my notes, and that's why I said I got, I got to go ahead and say it. We have to get out of our comfort zone and start actually fighting these battles in the yeah. spirit. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. Important battles. But if God is not welcome, what are we doing if we call ourselves Christians? What are we doing if we call ourselves Christians? I'm not speaking to the world. I'm speaking to the saints. We have to bring our Lord Jesus Christ to the table. We have to. Because if not, 2 Timothy 4 is happening in real time and we don't even know what's happening. Because we are itching ears what we want to hear and it has nothing to do with the Lord. Right. And it's happening in real time. In the church. In the church. Deep word. Let me go forward. Break out. To get out, we got to get out of our comfort zone. Let me hear you say, break up. Break, break up. up. Third one. Break up to get up. We got to break up with people and patterns that bind us. Right. If I'm going to have a dirty rain experience, I got to start breaking up with people and patterns that bind us. No doubt some of you in this audience right now might be entangled with somebody. And the Lord has been putting it on your heart. And I say this with great boldness and assertiveness and clarity. You need to break up. Yeah. Don't gradually taper off. Yeah. God said, cut that off right now. Ask God to help you to cut off that toxic relationship. The relationship that is pulling you further and further away from your destiny. That pattern that we got going on that the Lord has been speaking to us. Don't be mad at me. Get mad at God. He loves you. I'm just being a messenger right now. Be serious about this word. You're going to say, God, was that for me? Do I need to break up with this person? Do I need to break up with this pattern? Because if I'm going to have a dirty rain experience and I keep putting sin right in the camp, if I keep sleeping with sin right in the camp, if I keep worshiping sin right in the camp, if I keep, in a sense, loving sin and don't feel convicted, and God is saying, I got to break up that pattern. His grace is sufficient for us all. God will give us the, 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 I'm going to say the strength. Nobody in this room was perfect. Nobody in this room is perfect. Myself included. But one thing, when God speaks to me, and I might wrestle like, hey, hey, logistically, Lord, I can still. No, God said, Anthony, break it up. Break up the pattern. Break up the pattern. I got to break up the path to get up out of my comfort zone destiny life. I got to break it up. Got to break up with the path. Got to break up with the path. Here's another one. Fourth one, break down to get down. Let me hear you say break down. Break down. To have a dirty rain experience, there's going to have to be some sort of breakdown and I have to get down. They lowered the man through the roof. Literally lowered him through the roof. This man was in a very vulnerable state, talking about humility now. Where you got all the spectators looking for Jesus to do his thing, so to speak. And he is lowered through the roof. He is, in a sense, paralyzed. Can't move. Physically, often in our lives, we think of some of the worst times in our life when we couldn't move. People are looking at us. I'm stuck. And the Lord is saying, take that humility and begin to trust me and worship me. Yes, if I'm having a breakdown, I got to admit certain things to myself. I have to be able to lay low. I can't keep posting every single thing on social media. Right. Praise the Lord. Right. I mean, there are certain things we shouldn't even announce. Right. You let them know what you did after you did it. He's saying, I'm fit to do this. I'm about to do this. 
Sometimes we cancel out what God has in store because we are not laying low. We are not being full of humility. We're on broadcast channels and we're saying so much and we're saying it to the wrong crowd and we keep forgetting that this is a spiritual battle. So when we start declaring and decreeing things before their due time, oftentimes there's going to be a canceling out sometimes and we have to lay low. We've got to humble ourselves. If I'm going to have a dirty rain experience, i got to get down. I got to pray my way out of it, face down. I got to be humble and admit, Lord, I need your help for this situation. I got to start admitting that I'm not doing well to the Lord. We can fool every single person every single day over and over. Even our close friends sometimes don't know the true depth of some of the battles and the things that are going on in us mentally. How many people are crying themselves to sleep at night? How many people are just raging? How many people are feeling just so horrible? How many people are beating themselves over and over again? And we have to say, Lord Jesus, you know my thoughts anyway. If I'm going to have a dirty rain experience where you heal me and you cause me to quit being so full of fear that I'm paralyzed that I can't move from it that I'm going to admit to you I'm not going to wait till 2024 I'm going to get along with the Lord and say God this is me at your feet I need some help I say poetically all the time God sees our screams he sees the fact that can't you see I'm screaming I'm steaming from a broken dream and I need help without saying words. We don't even have to say a word. God sees our screams. He hears our scream. He knows our thoughts. God knows that we're screaming. Can't you see I'm screaming? I'm steaming from a broken dream and I need help without saying words. God is catching all of those screams. And he's just waiting for us to open up our mouth and say, Lord, this is me in the need of help. This is me struggling. This is me dressing up my pain. This is me outspending my budget to try to fit in. This is me just putting myself in a position over and over again to try to be so, in a sense, welcomed by others that I am actually beating myself up day in and day out. And I'm going through that cycle. And I got to lay low and say enough of the hokey, the, the foolery. I'm going to stop it right now. Get down. Get down. I have to get down for a breakdown. Break in to get in. The first one. Break out to get out. The second one. Break up to get up. Break down to get down. The fourth one. And my last one. Break through to get through. In order for me to have a dirty rain experience. I have to have a breakthrough yeah. to get through. Hands up if you ever had a breakthrough in any area of your life, that's me. Like anybody had a breakthrough yeah, before? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So one of the things that we have when we have our breakthrough is my mind is set on Jesus. My mind is set on Jesus. Like a thermostat is set on Jesus. Reality hits, life hits, my thermostat is set on Jesus. When things get out of whack, breakthrough is I know I got to pray. I know I got to go to church. I know I got to have my worship music going. I know I have to fast. I know I have to do whatever it is to have my mind set on Jesus. The breakthrough happens when I'm actually focused on the Lord. I said it earlier, and I'm just repeating it in different ways. Preach the word of God to yourself. Even if it's just one scripture, destiny life. We're in a war. We have the wool pull over our eyes because we keep fighting the wrong elements, the wrong people. Let me declare this to you. You are so precious in God's sight that you are a target in the darkness side of, 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 of the war. You're a target. And if I don't recognize that God has equipped me to do great works and I keep trying to do this stuff in the natural, I'm going to get beat up. You're talking about depression, Suicidal thoughts, anger, 
jealousy, guilt, shame, fear, rejection, and you can just spin that cycle over and over again, when my mind is not set on Jesus, my breakthrough is not going to happen because I'm just going to keep going through the cycle. I'll come to Destiny Life for a fix, feel good for about 20 minutes, 30 minutes. By the time you eat your afternoon meal or whatever you're doing, you're getting back in the same cycle. And God is saying, I want you to stay in my presence for a breakthrough. He loves us so much. The dirty rain experience happened because the people that we are connected with sometimes have to pick us up, kicking and screaming against our will and say, we're going to church today. They might have to text us, have you read anything today? I'm talking about the closest ones to us, they're going to become good pets. Because there are going to be times where it's going to be you, it's going to be them, and we're going to take turns where you're going to be on the side trying to encourage them. And there might be a season where they're encouraging you, our closest ones. The same pattern will be Jesus is the answer. Fight this in the spirit. If I got people telling me to fight spiritual battles in the natural, they got to drop to the acquaintance. Whatever you've been stumbling on, whatever you've been dealing with, you got to fight it in the spirit. Yeah. Whoever don't like you, whoever's talking about you, whoever posted just crazy things and all that stuff, fight it in the spirit. Sometimes your best response is no response. Why are you trying to convince the sinner to think like someone who's not even on that level? They're going to pull you into their chaos. I'm speaking a whole word right now. When Christians go back and forth with non-Christians, I'm going to get to the Christians and Christians in a minute, but when Christians go back and forth with non-Christians, we have to be very cognizant of that right there is petty, natural stuff. What am I doing? I don't even have to respond. I can pray for them and keep it moving because they're getting me off my destiny. They're getting me distracted. When Christians are going against Christians, we have to do what the Word of God says, because if we both know the Word of God, and I don't like this person, and they don't like me, and I can't bring my gift to the altar, the Word of God says, unless I settle my disagreement between my brother or sister. If some of you in this room right now got all, oh, they say all, oh, if you got something against somebody <laughs> that you actually know is a Christian, that's when the Word of God says, I gotta fight this in the spirit. I got to talk to my brother or sister in private. I got to try to get this hashed out. I got to forgive them. I got to forgive myself. There's just certain blueprints and architect for doing this. If I'm a Christian, I got to start fighting this battle in the spirit. Because dirty rain experiences happen. And I preach the word of God over and over again. The conditions are set when Jesus is on the throne. Most of the time, people who are best friends actually talk about work and family life. Research says over and over again, the top two topics that come up are work and family life. Yeah. So if my best friends is a saint, they're going to give me strategies for dealing with work drama. Yeah. Hmm. If my best friend is a saint, they're going to give me strategies to deal with in my marriage, with my kids, with yeah. all of that stuff. Yeah. Spiritual battles. If my inner circle is full of the Holy Spirit, I'm not going to be thinking about, you know what, I could roll up and just pop them in the forehead. No. <laughs> some of us grew up a certain way. You know we have to have some people close to us who talk us down. Hey, I'm just saying, some of us were born in, in, in positions where we had to fight our way out of everything. Where fighting was our number one, two, and three option. Where cussing somebody out was our number one, two, and three option. And we got saved. And if we don't have people who are close to us, we can easily resort right back. Inner circle. They'll tell us, slow your roll on that budget. Because you buy toys that they still got in the corner from three years ago that were never open. Come on now. You went into debt for stuff that's stuffed in the closet. Yeah. I'm not against gifts. I'm just saying use common sense on some of this. Sometimes we're charging and, and, and doing all of that, and you look up three years later and it's, it's, it's like still in a package. Jesus. 
I mean five, that's right. <laughs> Sometimes you gotta say, man, you don't have to do all that. Come on now. Sometimes you just gotta say, sister, you don't have to do all that. They know you love them. Sometimes you can just do what you do all year. And again, I'm not against gifts. I'm just saying we have to be very yeah. spiritually minded yeah. that in about two weeks, people are going to be dropping because of what they're doing right now. Yeah. That's just, all right, hold up. Let me find this one right quick. I'm just saying I got, I got, I got one for pretty much every single thing. I'm, I'm pulling it out. Right. <laughs> I got about seven of them, you know, and they just come out when I need me. I just had to throw the facts on that one. Destiny Life received this more than anything else over and over again. God wants us to fight spiritual battles in the spirit. Don't fight our spiritual battles in the natural. If you could just hold on to that word, everything else, dirty rain, uh, 2 Timothy 4, they all kind of flow with that. But I'm just saying, if you can just capture that word, that I need to fight this battle in the spirit, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, whatever it may be, I got to fight it in the spirit. I'm going to close out. I'm pulling this one out the vault, Pastor Cynthia. <laughs> Behind me, I notice it's doing praise and worship. It says, be still and know that I am God. I recently spoke at a church, and that was my whole message. Be still. And it was just spoke so well to me, personally. But that I am peace jumps out. And so, what I'm going to do, more than anything else, because... You can't ignore the fact that we're celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ. Think about the book of Mark that's kind of different than some of the other gospels is it jump right in with Jesus doing what he's doing. Not, you know, in a sense of staying on his birth. It went into the action Jesus. Right after John the Baptist baptized him, he get uh, um, baptized and then he rose from the water and this is my beloved son and I am well pleased and all of that. And then he goes on his ministerial tour, as I call it, that leads up to Mark 2. It just jumps right in in the action mode. So I want to take this in a practical role. This poetic piece I wrote called I Am Coming After You. Yeah. I Am Coming After You. This Christmas, every day, no matter. Yeah. Yeah. Here we go. I Am coming after you, the misused, the abused, the falsely accused, the used, the confused, the amused, the ones with the short fuse, the ones with multiple tattoos and tennis shoes that will get us sprayed, praised, or booed. Figuratively speaking, the owl who says, who, who, me, who, who, make no mistake, I am coming after you, you who have been disrespected, abandoned and left with a chest, heart and all that has been severely messed with. I specialize in open heart surgeries. Hyperboles have been bestowed on thee at the age of three or younger. Pain pulsates through your veins full of thirst for love and hunger. Games have been played since you were a babe that have stayed stuck in your soul so you struggle mightily to let your soul glow so you have begun to run like the wind when it doesn't have a breeze, freeze. I am coming after you. You with the clenched fist. You who are at risk. You with the slit wrist. You with the death wish bestowed on your date of birth. You with the brilliant mind buried in a brain of hurt. And I know it hurts to remain masked in tears that are about to burst. Let it go. Go ahead and boo-hoo. Because I am coming after you. 
Jew with the thoughts of low self-esteem. Jew with a child even though you were just a teen. Jew with a white shirt and a baggy jeans. Jew with the teardrops etched on your face. Jew repping hoods with numbers attached with creative names coupled with the trade deuce or ace. I care enough about you, you are worth the chase. Jew who live with sirens singing, tennis shoes hanging, dangling from wires, sirens singing, alarms, ambulance, police and fire. They make a mean choir, performing often and that's why maybe you have checked out and live out of tune. That's what a daily dose of doom will do. But that still doesn't stop me from coming after you. You with the music drowning out your pain. You with the dark clouds pouring purple rain. You with the parents who are missing from your life. You with the arguments playing loud each and every night and it's all over your airwaves. I understand. And I, and I would like to send this shout out to all the people who misbehave. You with the apologies. Think about it. You with the apologies. You who lost your zest and drive no longer a go-getter. Listen. Be still and know. And I can assure you that this is true. I am coming after you. You can run, but you cannot hide. I can feel your pain in your silent cries. I see your tears flowing when no one knows. And you didn't know that I am here when you're full of rage and fear. I am here when you are feeling regretful and lonely. I am here, only a whisper away. Just say help. And all the emotions you are feeling now and have ever felt that will, will be released. And my love will wrap around you and hold you up like a belt. I won't let go. Beneath your feet, your souls are tired of burning holes in the ground for running the wrong way. All of that ends right now. Tonight, today, I am coming after you. You who are broken, bruised, messed up, dressed up, the sick, the slick, the rejected, the sinful, the scarred. I want the callous, the worn out, the murderers, the hard. I am coming after you. Thus, Saith the Lord, throw your hands in the air, bow head, close eyes, and cry out to me, surrender. I am here. Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. Others might be in a position where they just want to come and ask for some personal prayer requests. Some people might come up and just want to pray by themselves. The I am is here. God loves us so much. The bread of life is here. He's here. So if you feel the Lord tugging on your heart to come forward so that you can have a dirty rain experience all day, every day, where you can actually break in, break out, break down, and break up, break through, God is with you. You can actually begin to preach to yourself and others and have God give you the confidence to recognize that he called you to carry out in 2 Timothy 4 your full ministry. He's going to encourage you to do that. You're going to fight this in the spirit destiny life. He's called you. He's equipped you. He has great plans for you. The altars are open. The altars are open for whatever the Lord is speaking to your heart. He just wants you to know that you He wants you to know that you're loved. That He has great and wonderful plans for each and every one of us. That it doesn't matter the season that we're in, He's with us. He's gonna walk us through. He's gonna comfort you just so that you can comfort others. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you right now that your Holy Spirit is moving. Lord, we just pray, Lord, that you can constantly just pull on people's hearts to know that you love them. Lord, we just ask by your grace and mercy that the war that is going on right now in Galatians 5, it talks about light and darkness, Father, going on right now, that there are some dark things going on in some of our lives, and God is saying, let my light lead you in a new direction. Father, we just pray for anyone struggling with anger, anyone struggling with doubt, 
anyone struggling with believing the world over the one that they should be worshiping, Father, we just ask that we put you in your rightful place. Lord, anyone who don't know your name, Father, whether in this house or online or whatever the case may be, Father, we just ask you right now yes. to remind people yes. that yes. eternity is free. Yes. By the grace of God, just by accepting Jesus Christ, you paid the price for us from your birth to your death to your resurrection, Lord, you paid the price for us to come into your presence and stay in your presence forever. So anyone, Lord, who needs to accept you as their Lord and Savior, we pray, Lord, that they make that move. Anyone else who needs to be bolstered in their confidence, just to be reminded of the call that you have given them since they were a young boy or a young girl in some cases, Father, there are some people who are being reminded right now of what you called them when they were in vacation Bible school, praise the Lord, of what you called them to be. Lord, we just ask that they come to you, yes, the great I am. Yes, Father, that our minds will be fixed on you, the author and finisher of our faith. We trust in you. Yes, we believe in you. We thank you, as my sister said earlier, we thank you and we're grateful. Yes. We're grateful, Lord, that you came to this world to save us all and give us the opportunity to live with you in eternity and to give us a calling that we can carry out at this very moment. Yes, you raised us up to live in this very moment, Lord, and we thank you for it. And let us not overlook that. Help us to fight in the spirit. And we thank you in advance, Father. We thank you in advance. We thank you in advance. Praise the Lord. We thank you, Lord, for what you're doing. Thank you, Lord.